everybody, it's Cash. Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I wanted to talk today about healing. Uh, it's not a subject I'm in any way an expert on, but it is a topic of enormous fascination to me. Uh, if you've seen previous videos I've done on this, I said about how when I was a kid, while other children wanted to grow up to be astronauts or footballers or a policeman or whatever it was, I just wanted to heal people. I wanted to be able to touch them like Samantha in Bewitched and just touch them and they would be free of the straitjacket of their illness, their wounds, um, their incapacities. And of course, uh, that never happened. It's not going to happen. But uh, it does fascinate me as a topic. And I've explored it over many years. If you read my little book about believing, you'll know that while I was in Brazil, I did make inroads into discovering what leads to wellness. That it was a matter, a lot of the time, of consciousness, uh, of believing you could get well, of raising your vibration to a level of wellness, from a low vibration level of illness. And what did that in Brazil when I was there was relaxation, sunshine, clean air, happiness, meditation, so on. You know, all these things that you would expect, but we don't get them in life. We don't laugh enough. We don't breathe enough clean air. We don't eat the right foods. We don't take care of ourselves as our body would like us to do. And so we can get ill that way. And so I learned that about raising the vibration of the body um, to a level of wellness, the frequency of wellness while I was in Brazil. Then, of course, I met uh, the Christian Science Healer. If you remember my podcast, if you didn't actually hear that, it's still on the channel somewhere. I'll put a link to it down below. Who came for an interview about Christian science and the healing technique that their practitioners use to heal people. And now, of course, a lot of people dispute that that's possible. But I was fascinated by it because my parents were Christian scientists, my dad in particular. And when I talked to him, he was saying that the way healing takes place is by forgetting the body, not seeing yourself as a body, but instead seeing yourself as the spirit inside the body, your divine link to all that is. Because at your core, at that divine level, you are vibrating at the frequency of perfection, the God frequency. That's inside all of us. We have that spark of the divine as our animating force. And because we do, and because our body tends to be a low consciousness thing, this big clunky vehicle we're forced to ride around in while we're on the earth plane, if we can, in a way, divorce ourselves from whatever hurts about the body, whatever we feel about the body, and simply focus on expanding the perfection that's going on inside of us by virtue of our divine connection to uh, the everything of everything, because that's in us. If we can do that, then the body will rise in vibration and we will get well because illness is a low vibration state. And the more we focus on the body, on what's wrong with the body, the more we label it, the more we kind of double down on what is wrong rather than focusing on what is right, our perfection, our link to the divine, and allowing that to lift us up. And then last year in Sedona, another piece of the puzzle came along to fit into place. It was there that I learned about not trying so hard, not seeking solutions with the dedication I had been. You know, I have skin sensitivities and I'm constantly looking for ways to solve this problem. And uh, what I learned in Sedona was that if you are constantly running around trying this, uh, experimenting with that, eating this thing, not eating that thing, you will ultimately miss 
what really matters. You will focus on your body again and miss what really matters, which is this central core of perfection, of harmony, of balance that exists right here. And if you allow it to expand and that level of conscious awareness to expand, it can give you what you need in terms of healing, which is why people experience healing, I assume, in Sedona. And then just recently, I learned something else. And it was while I was reading a book by Dr. David R. Hawkins, Letting Go. Now, David Hawkins was, the, he actually spent 30 years, I think, in Sedona and died there in 2012. A very, very eminent man, but a very controversial one. And uh, he experimented with the whole idea of consciousness and of letting go of those things that don't serve us, the things we hang on to, the things that can make us ill. Because what he says in Letting Go is that we basically give our power away to all sorts of different things. And this reduces our energy, our ability to heal, because we are disempowered. And our immune system can be compromised because we're not strong, we're not centered, we're not living in harmony and joy and gratitude and love and kindness and so on. We're instead dissipating our energy in every direction. This is not new information to me, but it's certainly a fascinating adjunct to what I've been exploring. Because I realize that that giving your power away thing is something that I have done for decades. And I do it in two ways, I've noticed. I mean, many ways, actually, but two main ways. First of all, I give it to the future. I became, honestly, if I'm totally honest, I became addicted to astrology, horoscopes, psychics and stuff. When I was in my early 20s. It became a genuine addiction for me. I was always curious about what was going to happen, what lay down the road. Now, the difference between, say, predictions and my pictures, a prediction is a bit like a GPS in a car. You're given by somebody else a destination. This is going to happen. This will probably happen. And then you sit in the car and you let the GPS take you there or not if it doesn't happen, but you are giving your power away to somebody else who is saying this will happen. The pictures are a bit more like an old fashioned road map where you're shown all the different routes or routes you can take to the destination you would like. And you choose. I find that landscape idea and making the choices myself very empowering. When I read horoscopes and went to psychics and stuff all the time, I was giving my power away, living in hope, looking for comfort, projecting myself forward rather than living in this present moment, which is really all we have. This is where we are the most empowered because life is so incredibly short. We're just a blip in time. Even if we live to like 100, we're still just a blip in time, a high and a goodbye. A bit like walking past a shop window and seeing your reflection in it as you pass. Hi, goodbye. And yet we don't dwell in the area, the space, the zone where we are our most potent. Instead, we project to the future. Well, I have broken in the past year my prediction addiction, actually. No more horoscopes. Psychic videos, no. Looking forward to the future? No. I'll do my pictures with a roadmap and I will make choices based on my own soul's path to get to where I want to go. But I'm not taking anybody else's advice on where I should go. That is taking back your power. So I did that for decades. But also the past. We are constantly reviewing where we've been. Things we're powerless to affect now, they're gone. And it affects the body. David Hawkins suggested that 
these lingering memories, these wounds, the scars of yesteryear, compromise our immune system if we keep on feeding the energy. Now, I believe this. If you remember, my father died in May last year. I did his pictures, which I showed you. We weren't close. It didn't really affect me terribly. But months later, the issue of his will came up at the end of 2022. For an entire month while this was being dealt with, I had zits everywhere. I had toothache. Now, when I get toothache, what I do is I rub coconut oil on it, uh, which is an antibacterial, antiviral thing. And I also spray it with colloidal silver. And usually that's enough to deal with it. But what I have always thought is that when people have toothache, it's not because they've eaten too many sweets or anything. It's because the nerves in your teeth are connected to your organs. And when you have a problem with your gums and your teeth or whatever, it's because it's reflective of what is going on in your organs, inside your body. So you're dealing with the result, but actually the cause is down here. I've recommended reading many times this book, Messages from the Body. It links psychological and emotional and sometimes sexual uh, problems with physical causes. And I always rush to it and look whenever I find something going on with my own body. Um, so it's a fascinating book. But David Hawkins said, look, you know, you live in the past. And that's what I was doing with my father. But the moment this issue of the will came up, back it all came. This stored up resentment and it went into my face. It went into my teeth. And now I'm fine, but it just shows. It's in there. And David Hawkins said, if we can release this stuff, if we can surrender this stuff and get it out and have no more feelings about it, our body will heal. Rob your past of its power over you emotionally and rob the future of its power over you by virtue of fear, anxiety, and so on. You come back into your sovereign self and you are united with that very spiritual core, which is your source of life and empowerment. I think that is incredible incredibly true. Now you have to take care of nutrition and exercise and so on, all the stuff we know. And uh, tension, stress, those constrictions cause all kinds of different things in the body, all kinds of different problems. Things that cause inflammation in the body, they cause their own problems. There's a lot of stuff to consider here. But Hawking says, if you can deal with the emotional root of your issues, you can eat anything at that point because your body's going to be at such a high level of vibration that you won't have a problem. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I'm getting there. I'm working on this raising your vibration by detaching from the future, the past, from stress, anxiety, and so bringing it all in to my source of power in the now. Now he has, this is Hawkins, he has people who discredit his work. He's been attacked many, many times. You know, he was the pioneer of the technique of muscle testing, where you can ask your body questions and it will give you a yes or no answer. I've been using it in the videos. He is a renowned psychiatrist and researcher and conscious awareness expert. And uh, I find his work particularly stimulating. And you know what? Many, many people over the last couple of years have asked me to do his transition. And I did it back in, I mean, ages ago, like the end of 2021, probably. Um, but I never, ever posted the video. And indeed, I couldn't find the pictures when I looked, but I found them recently because I was reading Letting Go. And uh, I thought, I'll just tell you what they are now because his transition is quite unusual. When I went into the energy for David Hawkins, he was basically already in that cave thing that I always see. And he was just staring at the ground, the metaphorical ground. One of the things I can do 
when people transition, is I can go into their consciousness, which for this guy is particularly apt, actually. I can go into their consciousness and perceive what they are perceiving. And when I maneuver myself in there to look out of his symbolic eyes, there was a big hole in the ground, an enormous pit. He seemed not frightened, but apprehensive, as if he was saying, uh, I gotta go down there. What he was being asked to do was exhibit a certain amount of trust in the process, I think. And in the end, he just flung himself down it. If that's what I gotta do, that's what I'm gonna do. And he went down and down and down, but he had a very hard landing. It was like a very bumpy, rocky outcrop at the bottom that he landed on. What this said to me was that this guy was so smart, so aware, so knowledgeable, that he had to be detached by universal forces from his connection to those things. I mean, he had to be prized away from them in order to bring him down to earth. Because when he finally got up, there was the tunnel. So he was in the right place, but he'd had to be lowered from a very high place. You know too much. You're too aware. You can let that go, ironically. You can let that go. Just be in your spirit right now. Just bring your soul to the party, not your knowledge, not your connections, not your research. Just be you. Stripped of this stuff, kind of had it knocked out of him, he then went up the tunnel, this metaphorical tunnel I always see that leads to the light generally. Only in his case, when he got there, there was no light. There was another hole in the ground, another pit. And in the pictures, he sat down on a little bench thing and considered this. Into what context of my experience does this fit? How do I marry what I'm perceiving here with what I know from my research? His consciousness was still stimulated, still pumping out questions, analysis. And then he went over and looked into the hole and there was the light at the bottom of the hole. He was being asked to trust, not to know, not to ask questions, not to probe, but to trust. Everything he discovered in life, in form, was true. But now he had to put it into practice. And he just let himself fall. He did, in fact, let go. He surrendered to greater universal forces. Which taught me, you don't have to know everything. You don't have to strive for perfection. You don't have to be aware of everything to be in your power. You simply have to release those things that disempower you. Release your overthinking. Release your analysis, it seemed to be saying. We need to be present in our sphere of influence. What we actually have a control over to regain our power and shed our fear of the future, our anxiety about the future, our worries, and our shame, our guilt, our regrets, disappointment, rejection, whatever is in our past. Get rid of it all. And I remind you of the Carolyn Mace uh, technique for um, empowering yourself at the end of a day. You imagine you're wearing a metal band around your head or a crown even, and there are wires coming out of it in all directions. And every single wire is connected to some situation or person that you gave your power away to during the day. And once you have realized who or what that was, you get the wire in your imagination, you get the wire, you snap it out of the crown, there's a little spark, and you throw it away. And you take your power back. 
whoever was draining you, whatever was draining you, it will drain you no more. You are in your power. And you do that with everybody or every situation. Every email you got that disturbed you slightly, every piece of news you got that uh, didn't sit easily with you, any moment of disharmony or stress or feelings that you don't like, like anger and whatever, you just give it all away and you bring your power into yourself and you raise your vibration and all these other influences cannot touch you anymore. And that, according to David Hawkins, is the source of healing. Among many other things, I do recommend uh, reading Letting Go. And he's written books on healing as well, which are probably also worth reading. And I've really worked at it. Letting go of the past. Not worrying about the future. Not scattering my energies in all directions. Simply be centered in yourself, in your own power, in your own sovereign self. And uh, let divine intelligence, God, whatever, do the rest. That was it. That was what I had discovered most recently. All right. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.